Jim. I have any idea what you're talking about. And I would like to introduce you first and uh, then have you introduce your very fine guest seated with you. This young man is Jim Larson, who is one of our fine engineers and cameramen here at WOC. We're glad to have you aboard. And my goodness, you're going to have to talk up and also explain. Thank you, what, Pat. What's the subject matter today? Well, Pat, I'd like to have you meet Paul Clips, who's a noted authority on speaker reproduction. Uh, we're talking about high fidelity. Paul, what would you uh, define high fidelity as? I wouldn't. Everybody's already uh, already has his own definition, and uh, personally, uh, I don't agree with any of them. <laughs> the, you see, uh, high fidelity purports to be uh, well, maybe better sound than we had last year or last week. But uh, my feeling is that uh, uh, it's either fidelity or it's not fidelity, or uh, well, it'd be a little rough. It's uh, uh, it's uh, fidelity or uh, infidelity. Well, well, that, that sounds reasonable. Uh, how about, does that have something to do with sound? I know that it does. And, and what's the principle? Well, uh, what is uh, the principle of uh, sound reproduction? As far as we're concerned, uh, what we feel uh, should be, uh, should take place in good sound reproduction would be to recreate the sound as nearly as possible. We can't, uh, nothing is perfect or as the uh, uh, Persian rug, uh, rug maker uh, who puts a deliberate flaw on each little rug, uh, only Allah is perfect, you know. Well, uh, uh, we, can't make, we can't attain perfection in sound, but we can fool the ear enough so that uh, it is possible to reproduce certain sounds accurately enough so that they sound like the original. In other words, you can take a piano and uh, record it and reproduce it and uh, the reproduction will sound very closely similar to the original piano. Well, I've heard you uh, advocate the use of a horn. What is a horn and why is it advantageous? Mind if I read that? Go ahead. If you put a piston in the middle of a lake and slosh it up and down, you don't pump water. But if you can put a cylinder around that... Uh, oh, now, we were going to explain this in words of one cylinder, weren't we? Well, that would do it. <laughs> All right, we're going to put a cylinder around this piston now, and of course, with a cylinder around the piston, with the cylinder full, when we push up on the piston, we pump water. Uh, when we take a loudspeaker, a paper cone, sloshing the air of the room back and forth, uh, that's what it's doing. It's uh, not doing a, it's not doing a very efficient job of pumping, but we put a cylinder around that and connect that to a horn, and we immediately have an efficient loudspeaker, and. Uh, that brings us to another point. Uh, you might uh, have asked me why efficiency. Well, uh, amplifiers are cheap. We really don't need efficiency, uh, high efficiency in a loudspeaker system uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, getting more horsepower output. We can just put more horsepower in from the amplifier. But when we achieve a higher efficiency in the speaker, it achieves a lower distortion. And we'll define one more thing and, and try and keep this in words one cylinder too. Distortion is the introduction of any thing which was not originally present, something that you, uh, which has been uh, generated by the system and was not present in the original sound. Well, uh, uh, that might be harmonic distortion or it might be intermodulation distortion. That's a fancy engineering word. I'm sorry, it's, a, it's not a one-cylinder word. No, I know what modulation means, though. My voice usually is not. Maybe I need some high fidelity. No, uh, that's a different kind of modulation. <laughs> that's a good kind of modulation. That's a good Inner modulation is what the engineer assiduously avoids. Well, this is a new theory, isn't it? I mean, not no, no, it? it's not new. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I can't even claim uh, uh, originality for my own speaker system because people were using corner type speakers as early as uh, 1934 that I know of. People were using horns as early as 1919. Uh, people were using corner horns uh, before I uh, started working in the field uh, of corner horns. My own efforts uh, were largely in the, uh, let's say, the maximizing of an engineering design which would give you the most performance in a given amount of space. And we have it now down to the point where uh, it's possible to build a speaker which will reproduce the uh, uh, tone of a 16-foot organ pipe uh, and still have a small enough to fit in your living room. Why do you use a corner? Ah, oh boy, that's a long, that's a long, uh, a short question with a long answer. It's it's just this though. If you take a suppose suppose you thought of a wall as a mirror, as an optic, uh, 
Imagine it as an optical mirror and place some kind of a sound reproducing device in front of it. Uh, behind it, we see the mirror image of this reproducing device. So the device is bigger, twice as big as it looks. Now let's take uh, four, uh, uh, let's take another mirror at right angles to the first one. We've got four, uh, we've got the original uh, source and three mirror images. Take the floor as a further mirror and we have in all eight sources of sound. Well, it takes a certain amount of area to produce long wavelengths corresponding to the 16 foot tones of the pipe organ. And uh, the uh, uh, multiplication of the area can be done with mirrors. It's a, a little bit like the Prestidigitator. It's, it's a dirty tricks department sort of thing. You know, it still is pretty complicated to me. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, what's it mean to the average person, the average That's music right. lover? Mm -hmm. It means that uh, the phonograph, which has been a caricature of uh, uh, music, uh, can actually become uh, much more closely realistic. In other words, a really fine instrument rather than just something that is in a rather slapdash way reproducing sound as mm -hmm. we know it now. That's right. Well, well, Jim, did you want to show the picture of his, um, what do you call that, horn? Oh, uh, this, uh, uh, this is a trademarked name uh, uh, in which they, uh, it's a coined name, uh, combining the, uh, my personal name and uh, the fixing up the horn. Uh, well, here's the, here's our, here's the cover of our catalog. Uh, uh, the, uh, Speaker itself. This is a fanciful uh, drawing. Uh, the uh, the like girl behind me. the picture couldn't <laughs> possibly exist uh, behind the wall that way. Uh, there is the uh, uh, speaker system in the wall, and the name uh, which we chose, uh, which was uh, given to it, uh, given to it more or less jokingly at first, is now trademarked. Uh, the uh, utility model shows a little bit about how it might. Uh, you can see a little bit about its functioning. This lower uh, uh, portion uh, uh, right here is the uh, base speaker, or uh, what we call woofer. Then the next uh, unit up uh, on top of that is what uh, has been referred to as a squawker. And uh, fitting in the <laughs> mouth of this uh, uh, mid-range horn is a small, still smaller horn. The little black spot you see in there is what they call a tweeter. It's only four inches wide. Well, now, uh, where could a person hear one of these? The, uh, we're going to put on a demonstration down at the Empire Room tonight, and I hope that uh, we will uh, have the services of your uh, staff pianist uh, for a few minutes at least. George, are you going to play down there sure. for that? Sure. Count me in. That's uh, Empire Room of the Hotel Blackhawk. 7.30 I'll be down, huh? Uh, okay, 8 o'clock we'll put on the show. Our idea is that, we'll try, uh, that uh, we will record the pianist while he plays, then we will play it back and let you compare the original piano with uh, the reproduction. Yeah. Very interesting. I want to hear this. Yes, I would like to hear It won't sound the same to you as it does to the audience, though. It won't. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask a question. Some of my friends do have some sort of high fidelity equipment, and it mm -hmm. seems to be all wound up with wires and stuff, and you're tripping over uh, equipment and everything. Now, yours is all compact in one piece of furniture, if in I may the, call uh, it that. In the case of a demonstration such as we'll have down there, we'll have lots of spaghetti lots strung of spaghetti. all over the end of the room. <laughs> However, we do have a, the speaker as an integrated package, and the rest of the equipment is something which would normally be integrated into a console in one's house, That's say right. in the closet or someplace, or maybe a little bookshelf. In the present case, I'm carrying this uh, all this bunch of contraption around in the back of the plane, and it has to be connected up with uh, with uh, plugs and wire connectors, and as I said, spaghetti. Well, in other words, when someone is satisfied with their hi-fi, hi they can put it neatly away so that it's not a cumbersome or a, an eyesore in the home. Oh, yeah. Well, Mr. Clips, I think that we're all very honored to have you with us today. It's very fine to have a person uh, as outstanding in his field as are you. And thank you, old dear. And I'll see lots of you around here at WOC. And now let's listen to Phil Kane and see what the news and the weather outlook is. Well, there are two big unresolved quarrels today. The Senate Investigating Subcommittee is now to the point of writing a report on the Army McCarthy hearings. 
Senator Carl Munt says the hearings could have gone on indefinitely, but he said there is now enough to create a report. And Senator Ralph Flanders has received unofficial encouragement from the administration in his bid to strip Senator McCarthy of committee chairmanships. And the left-wing government of Guatemala faced an advancing invasion army, and it prepares now to go before a five-nation inter-American peace commission. We'll see what will develop there. And now in the weather department, the weatherman says partly cloudy, warm and humid. Those are two familiar words. Too familiar, warm and humid, tonight and tomorrow, with occasional thunder showers tonight and tomorrow. No. Low tonight, 70, high this afternoon, which, uh, well, it's reached the high right now, 92 degrees, and it's expected to go up to 92 again tomorrow. That's the weather and the news, and here's Pat. Well, you don't feel it must not be quite so humid. None of us are sitting here dripping. We've got the fan going. I hope you're as comfortable at home. And speaking about comfort, I think we should all sit back and enjoy some wonderful...